and is a fairly new form of advertising I would think uh, we're all familiar with uh, advertising that we would see on the ad break you know we call that a spot ad uh, but brands are trying to find different ways of engaging with people and uh, one of the interesting ways of doing that is branded content uh, one of the what we'll talk about today is, is specifically what we would call a brand film and this would be a short film that we would produce in collaboration with a brand mm. and it might be on a topic that's uh, uh, related to the, what the brand stands for. So for instance an example could be you could be a, a consumer technology brand and you would like to uh, tell the world how much you care about uh, creating a technology that is environmentally sustainable. Mm. So rather than just tell that you, we would create brand films about interesting stories, beautiful stories of uh, people doing great things for the environment brought to you by that brand. Oh, I see. All right, so now there's a whole bunch of science that you've kind of come up with uh, to talk about um, how you can measure the effect of branded content uh, compared to just normal content. Tell us a little yep. bit about that. So one of the much more fun parts yeah. of my jobs is to uh, measure the effectiveness of advertising. And branded content is where it becomes really interesting. The key about branded content is it, uh, the, what the effect it has on someone is emotional. Right. If I tell a story to you about uh, some people who are doing uh, amazing things uh, to clean up the beaches and they're doing that to help their community, that's going to touch you emotionally. And so we can't use the same measurement techniques to measure that that we would for a traditional advertising spot. So we turn to some uh, new innovative uh, technologies. One of them is uh, to measure emotion through what happens on your face. And I'm sure uh, a lot of the viewers will be aware yeah. that cameras can now detect emotions based on looking at a face, the corners of the mouth, the, the brow, mm -hmm. where your eyes and how that, those muscles move will allow us on a, uh, if we were to test with hundreds and hundreds of people, allow us to understand that people were feeling surprised at this point. They were feeling curiosity here. They were feeling fear, and then they f then they finished feeling happy. You know, so we're able to map that emotional journey. And when we work with, uh, as BBC Global News, when we work with a, a brand that would like to do branded content, we communicate that back to them because that's what they would like to know: yeah. is what was the the journey that people went on. Uh, one thing we've done more recently is to measure memory. And that you need to be even more sophisticated. Uh, there's some amazing technology out there that we have uh, become, begun to use. And one of them is uh, technology related to neuroscience. We, believe it or not, uh, emit electro electrical activity at the surface of our skin that indicates brain wow. activity in various parts of our brain. And we can put caps on people's heads. It's <laughs> not unsafe. Um, uh, perfectly safe technology and uh, we are able to detect as someone watches a piece of branded content whether they're having an emotional reaction to that content also whether the thing that we are talking about is going into their long-term memory all right so you keep talking about emotion are we saying that the more emotion you can evoke the greater and the longer that it'll stay in one's memory and connect with the, the viewer yes and I think implicitly we would all assume that to be true mm -hmm. And we're really happy to see that the, the research that we've done has proven it to be true. Uh, essentially what we're saying here is that when people have a moment of great emotional intensity, that is a trigger for them, their memory gates to be unlocked and for them to start to put things into their long-term memory. And this is, comes from an evolutionary perspective. Our brains are wired to, d to make very careful decisions on what they're going to remember and what they're not going to remember. Anyone has experienced the feeling of coming into a room and then forgetting why you're supposed to be in that room. Room, yeah. or giving a talk and then suddenly forgetting what you're supposed to say. Our brains are very selective in what they choose and yet a lot of us have memories from childhood decades ago. Why is it that our brain chooses to remember something for 20, 30, 40 years and then forget something we may have done just a few days ago? I, I suppose watching films we've always been kind of tuned that way isn't it? I mean we get caught up in it and there's a suspension of disbelief. Are we going to see even the way news is done perhaps change given this emotional hook that you're talking about? Uh, so the, my area of yeah. work doesn't really touch the yeah. news, yeah. I must say. Uh, the news is very independent yeah. from the kind of stuff we do with our advertisers. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to uh, mm. uh, affect the news, but I will say that 
we do measure the response to news right. and it has been a big start to the year we've had all sorts of news go on uh, globally around the world we've had coronavirus we've had uh, Trump uh, impeachment uh, uh, in the last uh, couple of months we've had the Iran situation as well um, we've had the Australian bushfires it has meant that we have seen a huge amount of response emotional response as well uh, to news particularly uh, so it's been it's been a very very powerful uh, start to the year that's how we come to